where catchable was taking place there in the worship. But I believe that there are certain times that we can even miss what God is doing. Amen. Sometimes the spirit of God is just pouring out and pouring out. And he's pouring out because he knows our needs. But many times we can hold back. Amen. And, and not receive what God is doing. And, and I'm the type of person that uh, even before I was saved, when they said buffet, I was the first one there. Amen. And I didn't just take my little casual plate and fill it halfway. I was the one, amen, that you would see walking and had the mound like this. You know you weren't going to finish it, but because you paid $12.99, you were going to eat everything. Amen. Come on. That's the way we used to be. You used to go to 7-Eleven, and because you paid 99 cents for a big gulp, amen, you filled that thing up, and you you would drink the whole thing, and then you would still fill it up again when you know, amen, that your stomach was going to hurt. Nobody here. I'm the only one. Okay. I'm trying to get that lying spirit out of you, but okay. We have to understand that when... We just trust God and walk with God. Come on. That He can change our lives. Amen. A little eight ounce cup can be more refreshing than the big one. When God is enough in your life, He will begin to change not only your circumstance, but the way you begin to see things. And I believe that we can get complacent in this hour. In what the Lord is doing. So many people in this time are getting lazy, are falling uh, back. I and mean, the Bible talks about a falling away that will take place. It's in the Bible. It's called the apostasy. It says that in the last days, amen, people that were in the church, people that were on fire, people that were worshiping, people that, man, were hungry for God, something happened that makes them say, well, I'm okay now. Or, oh, I don't, the, the, the famous one, well, I don't believe that anymore. What do you mean you don't believe? We have to know how Satan is so crafty, amen. Satan is the prince of the air. And sometimes we begin to focus more on what they're saying in the news. We begin to focus more on what we're hearing instead of what the spirit is speaking. We need to understand that in the last days, God said I would pour out my spirit and you're either going to run to God or you're going to run from God. Ha, listen to me, Woody. Listen to what I'm saying. That what's happening is that there's a lot of Christians, there's a lot of people that just like sitting in a chair but don't want transformation. Amen. They don't want to be renewed. They don't want to deal with the issues in their life. They, they, they're comfortable with that pain. They're com they're, they, they, they become comfortable complacent and they, they, they can tolerate those areas in their life. They know how to work around the brokenness. They know how to deal with the trauma in their life. But God never designed you and I to live in that way. He said that he would set us free. When Jesus came, he said, I came to set free the people of God. It's not an hour to be spiritually relaxed. It's a time, thank you. It's a time to press through. It's a time to move forward. It's a time, amen. The Bible says that the kingdom of God had suffered violence, but the violence, they take it by force. That means that we will have to push through. Amen. I don't know about you. When I get to heaven, amen, I, I'm, I'm not going to get to heaven and want to run in and jog and just say, I'm here, Lord. I want to walk in and I'm exhausted. I want to know that I gave it everything, that I crawled in, that whatever God called me to do, the apostle Paul says, I've been poured out. And I think a lot of times we were comfortable with, with Christianity and in being this, this good Feel good message. We come to church and we just, we, we better our lives. We don't cuss like we used to, amen. We don't drink anymore, amen. Or at least we shouldn't, amen. Unless you're a sipping saint, but that's another story, amen. But, you know, we, we, we begin to do certain things. But God is looking for transformation. In Romans chapter 12, verse 1, he says, To present your bodies a holy 
and a living sacrifice. And then he says that we are to be transformed by the renewing of our mind. That means that I can't do the things I used to do. I'm going to have to make a choice. I'm going to have to trust God. I'm going to have to believe him. Amen. And I'm going to have to pick up the cross. A lot of us are comfortable wearing a cross around our neck or wearing it on a shirt or a nice bumper sticker. But the cross represents death. And until you have a death with your old self, you will never find Christ. Listen to what I'm about to say. In Galatians 2.20, he says, it's no longer I that live it, Paul says. Paul says, it's no longer I that live it. So what is he identifying? He's identifying his old life. To be done. He says, now the life that I now live, I live in Christ. And I got a message, but I want to I share something that the, the Lord is pressing on my spirit in this moment. There's somebody in here or somebody watching online. Somebody you know that a few months ago, you were on fire for God. And God was moving in your life. And it was easy to be in the house of God. And it was easy to do what God was asking you to do. But now all of a sudden, trials have come your way. All of a sudden, your faith has come under attack. And now you're, you're even thinking, am I doing the right thing? Listen, don't you allow the devil to lie to you. It's called a breakthrough, not a walkthrough. Not a skate through. You're getting ready to take back authority and dominion that has been lost. Some of us, amen, are walking in generational curses that have nothing to do with the choices that we made. I'm talking about stuff that our great grandmothers opened the doors to, some kind of masonry, some mason stuff, some kind of crazy, whatever it is, new age or occult or, or, or santeria or, or all that witchcraft. And it, it's passed down from generation to generation. And you think, well, I never practiced that, but it's still in the bloodline. And somebody needs to break it, amen. Somebody needs to be... The breaker, somebody needs to stand in the gap with the breaker's anointing and say, you will not, amen, it stops here. My children and my son, my daughter will not walk under those curses. We need men and women to understand that we need to press through. And if you're feeling that way, a while ago, man, things were going good and you were on fire and it was easy to do it. It was, you can't even lift up your hands sometimes. The song comes on and you're like, I don't like that song anymore. I need a new song. We should never get tired of singing unto the Lord. Whatever the song is, the angels sing holy, holy, holy. They don't ever say, hey, Jesus or God, you know, can, can, can the choir practice a new song? They just come before God and they sing holy, holy. And every, everything in heaven is bound to him. We got to get our fire back. We got to get our praise back. We can't allow the enemy to keep us down. And I want to prophesy for a, a moment in this place. And if you know me, I am not a prophet. I don't ever say I'm a prophet. Amen. I'm, I'm a deliverance minister. I'm a healer. All I am is a servant unto the most high. But the Bible says that the same spirit gives all gifts. So if you're here today and you need a word of knowledge, guess what? The Holy Spirit is going to release a word of knowledge. If you're here today and you need a healing in your body, the Holy Spirit is going to move, amen, through the man, amen, to bring healing into your body. If you would believe, if you would open your heart, if you would trust in the Holy Spirit, sometimes we hinder the move of God and we need to understand that God moves, amen, when people are hungry. When people are desperate, he says, I will never despise a broken or a contrite spirit. Somebody whose heart has been crushed, the Lord is there. Somebody is proud. Somebody who's, you know, thinking they got it all together. God is not there. Amen. 
It's time to shake it off. It's time to throw off the heaviness. I, I need to speak to somebody in this place. It's time to take off that garment, amen, that is, is like a black. You're supposed to put on a garment of praise. Not a garment of heaviness. Not carrying the yoke. In the book of Isaiah chapter 61, in verse number 3, I love this scripture. It says, to provide for Zion's mourners, to give them a crown in place of ashes. Come on, is anybody, can anybody relate to that? Amen. Your pain, everything you went through, the betrayal, the hurt, amen, the finger pointing, amen, the attacks of the enemy. I'm telling you, they came because there was a purpose in your life. Amen. But God says that he's going to give us a crown in place of our ashes, oil of joy in the place of our mourning. A mantle of praise in a place of discouragement. And they will be called oaks of righteousness planted by the Lord to glorify himself. I need you to catch this. Storms are always going to come. But as long as you're rooted in Christ, as long as you're trusting in the Holy Spirit, and the reason I say the Holy Spirit, because a lot of people say, well, God, I, God told me, or God, I know God and, and Jesus. But, but uh, if you don't have a relationship with the Holy Spirit, you can't really know Jesus. You may know of him. You know he was crucified. You know, he died at 33. I mean, you know, he had 12 disciples. You know, he's the son of God. But if you really want to know the keys and the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven, and you really want to know Jesus, and you want to know God, you have to know the Holy Spirit. Because Jesus said the Holy Spirit will only speak when he hears us speak. Yes. We need to understand that the Holy Spirit is the one. Can you imagine... Jesus is there with his 12 disciples and the time had come. And he says, I'm going away. That must have not been easy. I'd have been like, no, Jesus, no. We left everything, Jesus. We put our trust and our faith in you. But Jesus says, I'm not going to leave you as orphans. He says, I'm going to send you a helper. Yes. If Jesus left and sends us a helper, it's because he knew that we would need the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Many times when it gets really hard for people, they begin to back off. Does anybody know what I'm talking about? It's because unless you're spirit filled, you will not be able to fight off the attacks of the enemy. You will not be able to know how to maneuver through the attacks of the enemy. It's so important for us as believers to be spirit filled. See, there's a lot of people that are spirit sealed. Amen. The Bible says that when you open your heart and you believed on this word that you were sealed with the Holy Spirit. But you and I need to be spirit filled. Because when you're filled with the Holy Spirit, you walk in discernment, you walk in wisdom, you understand and you walk. A lot of people want the Holy Spirit, but all they want is the all they want is the Holy Spirit is because he gives them power, but they don't want a relationship. Come on, I want that nice car because you know what? It's going to make me look good. Forget that. I, I want it because it has power and it'll get me more likes on my Instagram. But you forget the car payment. You forget the bank calling you. We got to desire the Holy Spirit. And know him as a person to have a deep, intimate relationship with him. He's the one that can teach us. He's the one that can, he's the helper. He's the counselor. 
He's the one that teaches us. How important is it for us to build that relationship with the Holy Spirit? To know Him, to really know Him, to live our lives submitted, yielded to truth. We can't lose focus. And I want to say this because I believe that the war in the heavenly realms has intensified. It's not going to get easier to serve God. In fact, it will get harder. People nowadays, it's so much easier and it's so much, it's so casual to serve the devil. It's so cool nowadays to be a witch. It's so cool to be new age. Come on, they got in the malls now, they got crystals and they sell all this crazy stuff. Dream catchers, that's demonic. How many Christian Bible stores do we still have nowadays? Why? Because the enemy knows how to move the things of God out. And yet everything he is doing, he's perverting, distorting, leading our, from a young age. From a young age, they're drawn to that. Oh, look at this shine. Look at these beads. And as parents, if we don't wake up, we're buying our children these things. Amen. Amen. We got to do research. When you're spirit filled, you will walk into a room and the Holy Spirit will give you a revelation. The Holy Spirit, it, something inside of you, amen, will, will begin to stir up inside of you. Because when you walk in, amen, the devil should not be comfortable, but neither should the Holy Spirit. Look, at, when, when, when we walk into a room, only one can stand. The Bible says that where there's darkness, when the light comes, it overtakes him. But darkness and light cannot be in the same place. So when you and I are spirit filled, when you and I are operating in the power of the Holy Spirit, when we walk into a room, whatever is taking place there, believe me that if you're, you're going to catch it. And, and I need you to, to catch what I'm about to say here. Uh, this is for, for, for people that may be more advanced. God will begin to reveal things to us, but not to judge people. Because we got to remember that we are not at war with people. We are at war with principalities, yeah. with agents in the spiritual realm. It's very easy for us to begin to look at somebody and judge them. It's very easy for us to, in our, in our religious spirit, begin to attack them. The Holy Spirit is not going to reveal to us something so that we can judge or knock somebody down. we got to remember that that's somebody's daughter, that that's somebody's mother, that that's somebody's child. And we need to know how to fight. We need to learn how to fight in the spirit. Amen. We need to know that we are not at war with brothers and sisters, but with those very principalities, those agents that are holding back or blinding the people from knowing God. It's the spirit of Antichrist. We either, there's only two spirits, amen? I mean, there's yeah. either the spirit of God or the spirit of Antichrist. And you're going to function under one. You choose. And the reason I say this is because God is not looking for an I know generation. Let's read the word and we begin to open up the word or we begin to share. Maybe you're in that chair right now saying, oh, I already know. I know, I know, I know, I know. But our life doesn't reflect what we know. God is not looking for an I know generation. He's looking for a generation that is spirit filled and that is yielding and being led by the spirit of truth, not the spirit of error. The devil has lied and hurt so many people. What I'm about to say is a sensitive area, but I believe it's going to bring healing to somebody.
The very reason some of you have went through some attacks is because of the call of God on your life. Some of us, the enemy even tried to kill us while we were in our mother's womb. And sometimes because we were told that we were not wanted, we walk around with the spirit of rejection or a spirit of offense. And we're walking around feeling like, do we really even matter? Do we really even belong? I need you to know this. You are not a mistake. The attacks of the enemy are evident because of the call of God on your life. But it's time to get free from that pain. It's time to get free from the lies. It's time to know who you are in Christ. Look at what it says in the book of Romans chapter 8 verse 28. And we know with great confidence that God who is deeply concerned about us. Come on somebody. Causes all things to work together as a plan for good to those who love God. To those who are called according to his plan and purpose. I can imagine how Job must have felt. The Bible says that Job was a righteous man. Nobody really likes to read the book of Job. Amen. Because we see what he went through. We see the pain. And we know the... But what does God say? Have you seen my servant Job? He's upright. Meaning that God knew what was in Job. But yet, the enemy tried to attack him. The enemy has tried to attack some of us from young ages. He tries to attack our marriages. Why? Because he knows that there's an anointing on our marriage. He knows that even as a child, as a child, did he not try to come against Joseph? Does anybody remember that all the children, two years and under, were killed at the time of Jesus? See, the enemy knows the spirit of Herod is alive. And it's trying to distort, it's trying to kill what God has for your life. Earlier, Pastor Nikki said about God is wanting to birth something new in you. Those are powerful words. But I'm here to tell somebody that Again, the scripture says, and we know that with great confidence that God who is deeply concerned about us, that means that God knows where you're at. Come on, somebody, God's got my back. Yes. I'm going to go through storms. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to experience things in my life, but hey, God is with me. Yeah. He causes all things to work together as a plan for good to those that love God. Now check this out. Those attacks, those people, the enemy, God's going to turn it around and he's going to use it for his honor and glory. Amen. That means that some of us, amen, God is going to get ready to elevate and to use to be able to share with somebody. Somebody that you can relate to, somebody who has been raped, somebody who has been abandoned, somebody who has been left as a foster child. Maybe somebody who... who the mother in their womb said, well, I wasn't supposed to have you. I was going to abort you, but, but your grandmother told me that I couldn't. Those seeds went inside of you. Amen. Those seeds were hurting you. And you were feeling like, I don't fit in. Do I belong? And that orphan and that rejection spirit, today it's going to break in the name of Jesus. Because I'm here to tell somebody that you do belong. You are called of God. And I'm telling you right now, amen, that 
the plans of God are good for your life. Don't allow the enemy to lie to you. Don't allow the enemy to get in your head. Stop tripping. Start trusting God. Everything that you went through had a purpose. Everything that you went through, God will turn around and he's going to use it. I need somebody to catch what I'm saying. The devil's going to have to pay back double. The devil's going to have to pay me back interest because in the heavenly courts, amen, God is turning things around on your behalf. Yes. Listen to what I'm about to say. Sometimes we think, do I fit in? Am I right? Is this for me? Uh, do I, can I even, is this, is this, am I doing the right thing? Those are all, that's how the enemy uses us to get distracted from what God is doing in our heart. Yeah. You know that the Bible says it's a circumcision of the heart, right? right. Now, nobody likes that word circumcision. But unfortunately, there's things in our hearts that need to be circumcised. Yeah. Yeah. That God's just got to get rid of. Yeah. But I need you to catch this. Do I fit in? Can I do this? <laughs> Is God with me? Why did I... Why did I go through what I went through? Does anybody ever question that? Yes. Or does anybody ask? Yes. See, I believe that it's okay to ask God, but not to question. Yeah. Because when you begin to question, you begin to doubt God. Yeah. But there's nothing wrong with saying, God, what is the purpose? Why did I go through this, God? Because God was with you in your hardest times. Mm -hmm. God didn't forget. God didn't say, oh, oh, I forgot about you. Let me come get you and bring you back. Let me show you what God says about you. In 1 Peter 2, 9, he says, but you are a chosen race. Ah, I get excited when I read this. Yeah. See, if you don't get excited, it's probably not for you. But I know that it's for me. And nobody can tell me that this scripture is not for me. And it's for you as well. But you just got to receive it. Yeah. Amen. He says, but you are a chosen race. A royal priesthood, a consecrated nation, a possession so that you may proclaim the excellencies, the wonderful. Look at what it's saying. Think about this for a moment. Do I fit in? Why did I go through this? God, where are you? God is saying, know who you are. But you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a consecrated nation, a special people for God's own possession. So that you may proclaim the excellencies, the wonderful deeds and the virtues and the perfections of him who called you out of darkness into the marvelous light. I need you to understand there was purpose for what you went through. There's a calling on your life. You've got to understand you can't. Everybody says, man, I want God to use me. I want God to use me. Well, guess what you're going to What you're asking God is, God, I need to be crushed. Yeah. <laughs> Well, I want you to use me, God, but don't crush me. It doesn't work that way. No. <laughs> Some of us being crushed and crushed and crushed. And guess what? You have a powerful testimony. Yeah. How do we overcome the enemy? By the, By the blood of the lamb and the word. Thank you, Pastor Nikki. Yeah. <laughs> By, the, <laughs> By the word. By, by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. You've got a testimony on the inside. You should be dead, but you're alive. The enemy should have never messed with you. He should have never tried to touch you. Because remember what the scripture says. That I am a royal priesthood. A consecrated nation. A special people. I like the translation that says, you are a peculiar person. Amen. That, so, so think about it. An unspiritual person, somebody that don't know Jesus, that word peculiar means you're weird. Yeah. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm super weird, amen? Because I don't fit in in that world, amen? Jesus said, amen, that his kingdom was not of this world. You and I are a peculiar people. That's why sometimes we don't fit in. We go places and we're like, let's just go. But when you walk into the house of God, 
and the anointing of God, Amen. you know your home. Yes. Immediately you feel the presence of yes. God. You're drawn. And you're like, I don't even know anybody, but I know that I belong. Amen. Because why? Kindred spirit. Yeah. Kindred spirit. Mm. You and I, we're a peculiar people. Yeah. We're special. Yeah. And some of us more special than others, you know. <laughs> but nevertheless, we don't fit in. We don't. Sometimes we try to hang out and do things like I, I do. I got family that's not safe. I pray when I go visit them, right? right? Me and my wife, we pray. Oh, Lord, you're sending us here for a divine appointment. Lord, who can we speak into? My beautiful wife's family, they're experiencing revival right now. Yes. Amen. Yes. She's the praying. Yes. When we walk into a room, we can't. Being drawn. We can't draw to them. Mm -hmm. We relate to them, but they should see the Christ in us. They should see and know that there's something different about you. Because if anybody knows us, it's family. Right? right? Mm -hmm. Some of our children, they knew us when we were out there. Mm -hmm. That's why some of us, our kids, they're watching and they're waiting and they're cautious because they've seen the mess that we made. All the crazy decisions that we made and now they're watching and they're cautious yeah. because they know us. Yeah. But now you've walked into your new life in Christ. Oh. Now you're walking as a son, as a daughter of the Most High. I really love this scripture. I love it. chosen race, a royal priest, a consecrated nation, a special people for God's own possession. Mm -hmm. And some people will say, well, that's just for the Jewish people. No, it's not. I'm grafted in, baby. Yeah. I'm grafted yeah, yeah, in. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. And if you ever do your ancestry, there's some, mine is 0.0.4% Jewish. We all carry something of Jesus. Yeah. But most importantly, the fingerprint of Jesus should be over our lives. Mm -hmm. That everywhere we go, that people would know. That they would know there's something different about them. What? They, they, they look at us and they're like, he's a little weird. <laughs> I, I could relate to him when, you know, when he was drunk and he was high and stuff, but now he's really out there, no? It's because of the paracletos, mm -hmm. the spirit of truth yeah. that gives us revelation to what is real and what is not. Mm -hmm. Are you with me? Yeah. Tell your neighbor, you're peculiar. <laughs> Come on, somebody. It would sound like you mean it. You're peculiar. <laughs> hey, that's a good thing, Amen. And the reason I'm saying this is because there's too many Christians in this day trying to be a lot like the world. Amen. It's so sad to see Christian artists mm -hmm. trying to make music with these secular people. It doesn't yeah. fit in. Right. It doesn't. Right. Listen, I got no problem ministering to somebody who is completely lost. I got no problem trying to minister to Marilyn Manson, but I'll tell you what, he ain't going to influence me. I'm, gonna, I'm there with the power of the Holy Spirit, and I'm gonna, he ain't going to be cussing around me. He ain't going to be, you know, all, all these, on the cray and all these people making music with all these people that are secular and calling it gospel. It's not gospel. What is holy is holy, and what is not holy is not holy. And we should know it's not okay. It's not the things of God. We got to contend for the faith, the Bible 
Bible says you got to fight to keep it pure. You got to, the enemy is trying to pollute it. The enemy is trying to distort it. The enemy is just trying to taint it. And guess what? We got to protect the anointing. You got to protect your testimony. You can't allow the devil, amen, to begin to mock God. So many people just, oh, it's okay. I'm just trying to win them. Well, I don't see you winning anybody. I see you being more like them than them like you. Paul was on the road to Damascus. A complete lunatic. He thought he loved God. And he did. But not the right way. You see, it wasn't until... A man by the name of Ananias came because when he met Jesus on the road to Damascus, everything changed in his life. He knew about God, but he wasn't receiving the Savior. Watch this. The Bible says in Acts 9, 17, so Ananias went and he found Saul. He laid his hands on him and he said, Brother Saul, the Lord Jesus who appeared to you on the road has sent me so that you might regain your sight and be filled with the Holy Spirit. Okay? So he knew about God. His encounter with Jesus blinded him because God wanted him to know that you, you can... See, but you're still spiritually blind. So Jesus says to him, on the road to Damascus, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? Yet Saul never witnessed Jesus. Saul never sat under a teaching of Jesus. Saul was never there and ate or talked to Jesus, but he meets Jesus and Jesus says to him, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? Because when you begin to touch a brother, when you begin to touch another believer, when you begin to touch the body of Christ, Jesus takes it very seriously. That's why when the first martyr, when Stephen was being stoned, anybody remember that? Stephen was prophesying and he was speaking about God and he was telling them about Jesus and the Pharisees got so upset that they stoned him. It's the only time in your Bible that you will read that Jesus stands up. Come on. The Bible always says that Jesus is seated at the right hand of the Father. That's what the Bible says. He's seated at the right hand of the Father. But if you read your Bible, it says that when he was being stoned, that Jesus stood up. He takes no. Takes heed. Jesus doesn't take it lightly. Saul is running around and he's breathing these threats and he's trying to attack the believers of the way. They were not called the church, they were called the believers of the way. And I can only imagine poor Ananias, because I wouldn't want this ministry. He's there. Saul was a brutal man. He wanted to bring every believer in chains. But Jesus appears to him and he says, I need you to go lay hands on this man that I'm going to use. Ananias probably been like, huh? Can you pick someone else? But he was obedient. And he goes. And let me read it again because I wanted to get in here. So Ananias went and followed Saul. He laid his hands on him and said, Brother Saul, the Lord Jesus who appeared to you on the road has sent me so that you might regain your sight and be filled with what? The Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit. Now, I need you to catch what takes place next. And it's not a process. Amen. Uh, for some of us, it is. Amen. Because... Because we're, we're not sincere or we're not really seeking God. We don't really want to go all in. But I'm, look, look at what this says. Amen. He's there and the next words in verse 18 says instantly. And I love that word instantly. Because just as the woman with the issue of blood, when she came and she fought through the crowd, when she moved people, when she crawled under being an unclean woman, amen, she was ceremonially unclean. She had no business even being around. If 
the woman came, she couldn't even sit in the temple because the whole road would be considered unclean. But this woman said, no, 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 I'm going for Jesus. And when she went, the Bible says that when she touched the hand, when she touched the talit, instantly she was healed. But how about Bartimaeus? There was a man on the side of the road and he was sitting there and he was blind and he begins to cry out and they tell him, shh, shh, don't, don't, don't bother. And he says, no, no, no. Jesus, son of David. Hey, Jesus, son of David. Be quiet, be quiet. Jesus, son of David. That Jesus says, tell him to come here. And the Bible says that instantly he could see this right here. Saul, he's a believer, amen. He, he, or he follows the Lord. He follows God, amen. But he doesn't. He's denying Jesus, amen. And he needs the Holy Spirit. Because the moment the Holy Spirit comes upon him, everything changes in his life. You and I need the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is not a wind. It's not a dove. It's not a fire. It's not oil. Those are symbols. He is the third part of the Trinity. And he is alive. And he wants to make residence inside of me and you. We need the Holy Ghost. Verse 18. Instantly something like scales fell from Saul's eyes. And he regained his sight. Then he got up and was baptized. The Bible says that many believers are serving God and even are being obedient to Jesus. But they're not filled with the Holy Spirit. And if you're not filled with the Holy Spirit, let me tell you the first thing that will begin to take place. You're judgmental. You're not open. How can you be open if you're not Baptized with the Holy Spirit. The works of the Holy Spirit are supernatural. And if you're not filled, you're going to judge from a natural perspective. Come on. I don't know what they're doing over there. Maybe it's a cult or something. I don't know. <laughs> because they don't open their heart. They can't believe. Because pride blinds them. And in their opinion, in their eyes... In their logic, their commentary said, there are certain things that the commentary can't teach you, except the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. Only the Holy Spirit that can set you free. We need men and women, spirit-filled, hungry for what God has in their lives. Saul knew God, but they didn't really know who he was until the Holy Spirit came upon his life and it revealed Jesus. Think about this. We can quote the Bible. Quote the Bible. But never have encountered the Holy Spirit. And those kind of Christians are very judgmental, very angry, because they're not really, I mean, my question is, are they really saved? Because we should have the heart of Jesus that we would want none to perish, but have everlasting life. I'm gonna close with this. I had to pray but if I was going to share this, because I know how it can come out. <clears throat> but I pray that you would know who your pastor is and that the Holy Spirit will reveal it to you. Yesterday, we were here and a few of us went to have some lunch. And we were talking about the Holy Spirit and about how the Holy Spirit, amen, how when you're filled with the Holy Spirit, you can walk into a room and if you're really spirit-filled, you, you will begin to even see manifestations take place right before you because of what you carry, because of what we carry, right? And we were sharing, and one of the brothers was saying that he walked into a store, and there was a witch there, and the witch was waiting for him. And he said he offered her a drink, and he says, but I'm going to pray for you. And he said at that moment, she began to manifest. And I began to share with him and say, hey, we need to be very careful because... 
the Holy Spirit will show us these things not to judge them, but to pray for them because that witch is somebody's daughter. Jesus died even for them. He died that none should perish, that they would turn away from that demonic stuff. And I'm sharing with these guys about how we have to be sensitive in the Holy Spirit. Because our feelings, our emotions can begin to look and judge it. But it's righteous anger. No, it's not righteous if we're hurting a person. I have to know who I'm at war with. And I go, we leave, we separate, and I go, and I'm going to check into my hotel. And as I go to check in, it's a little bit early, like 1.30. And they said, sorry, sir, you can't check in until 3 o'clock. And I'm like, well, I just called, and they told me, you know, I told them I'd be here in five minutes. Oh, well, sorry. And I, I looked at this young lady, or she's a, a tall lady, not 50, I mean, I'm 50, I don't know, she's probably my age tall lady. She's there. And I look and she has all these tattoos that represent darkness. Very dark. And immediately inside of me something begins to stir up. And I'm there and I'm asking the Holy Spirit What'd you do? At the same time, my flesh, because this flesh is wicked. This flesh is looking at her and saying, oh, she probably doesn't want to let me in because she knows. And I, all these crazy things are taking, warfare is taking place at the counter. It's real. And I'm there and I'm, 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 you know, I'm thinking, okay. And I said, okay, well, can I just wait in the lobby? I have all my luggage already in the car and I have my little dog with me and she's like, no, she says, oh, she goes, you can, but the, the room, will, we can't guarantee it. By three o'clock, I go, well, three o'clock is check-in. And so I said, oh, okay. I said, I gotta get away, I gotta, I gotta pray. I put all humbly, I said, okay, thank you. <laughs> Leave with my car and my dog and I put everything back in the car, but the dog was, even the dog was freaking out. <laughs> Believe me that, you, that even the animals, they, and I'm there and, you know, and I'm driving and I'm driving down and I'm praying and I stop and I said, well, let me get me a coffee and I get my coffee and as I'm getting my coffee and I'm with my dog, I'm about to leave and I get a phone call. I get a phone call and when I get the phone call, they say, Pastor Fer or Fernando, your, your room's ready. And I'm like, oh, amen, praise God. I have been praying, because I was in some warfare there, right? I'm gonna go back and I'm thinking, oh, you know? And so I'm praying and I'm asking God what to do. And I'm on the phone and I say, I'll be there in about 10 minutes. I said, in fact, I'm at Starbucks. I said, is there anything that I can get you? And she says, huh? And I says, I'm at Starbucks. Is there anything that I can get you? Mm -hmm. Now, your pastor doesn't go around flirting and buying women drinks. That's not what I do. <laughs> and, I'm, and she says, well, I'd like a tea. And I'm like, okay, Lord. The moment that tea was put on the counter, I began to say in the name of yes. Jesus, when she touches this dream, Lord, I pray that you are anointing. I pray, God, that you will show her who you are. Father, I pray right now that your blood would break everything, God, and that you would touch this young lady, whoever, or this older lady, whatever, middle-aged lady, that, Lord, that you would touch it, God, and that, Lord, that you yes. would just break whatever it is, whatever bondage and whatever it is. And, and so I go back now again. And uh, long more of the story is I had to be careful because what I just shared with my brothers about judging, about knowing the war, God presented it right before me. So when we speak something, you're going to be tested. 
And we got to remember. Yeah. Amen. And we have to understand that it's a spiritual battle. And the only way to win it is in prayer. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I believe with all my heart. That as I was praying, that that cup was anointed. She probably never had a tea like that in her life. <laughs> amen. Come on, can I get an amen? amen. Galatians chapter 5 verse 19 says, When you follow the desires of your sinful nature, the results are very clear. Sexual immorality, impurity, lustful pleasures, idolatry, sorcery, hostility, quarreling, jealousy, outbursts of anger, selfish ambition, dissension, division, envy, drunkenness, wild parties, and other sins like this. Let me tell you again, as I have before, that anyone living this sort of life will not inherit the kingdom of God. We gotta be sensitive to the Holy Spirit. Because a lot of times we can be carrying some of these things, a lot of times we can be selfish, a lot of times we can have outbursts, a lot of times we can be angry, I and mean, a lot of times we can carry jealousy and think, no, I'm not jealous. But jealousy comes in many different forms. Yeah. The only way we'll ever get breakthrough is if the Holy Spirit can reveal it to us. You know how many things I used to do that I didn't think were bad? But when the moment that I got saved and the Holy Spirit came into my life, oh my goodness, I didn't see the time. Amen. Praise God, thank God we don't have a time here. But Amen. The day that I got saved, it began to reveal to me all the things that I still battled with. Amen. I was still, I was still carrying anger, that I was still jealous, that I was prideful, that I was wounded, that I was judgmental, and I never knew that until the Holy Spirit came into my life. And the reason I say this is because without the ministry of the Holy Spirit, we'll never really know Jesus. And we will never really be free. Come on. We'll never be free. I want you to stand to your feet here today. I pray that we would leave here. pray that we would leave here edified. Amen. That we would not leave here depressed. That we would not leave here angry. That we would leave here filled with love, with peace, with joy. Look at what the Bible says as we get ready to close. Galatians chapter 5 verse 22. It says, but the Holy Spirit produces this kind of fruit in our lives. Love. And not just love the person sitting next to you. Love the unlovable. Love those people, amen, that are out there all messed up, that you're praying for them and you love the soul and you say, God, bring them home. Bring them home, God. Set them free. He says you're going to have peace. Peace is the most precious thing. And Jesus is the only one that can give us that peace that surpasses every understanding. And the one that everyone here needs. Don't tell me no. Because if you say, I'm good with my patience, God is going to test you tomorrow. And believe me that your boss will be the first one or your dog. or God will use anyone to show you that you're impatient. <laughs> Kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. These are the works of the Holy Spirit.